We often share family farming stories with you. There is a unique tie to the land that often links young people to farms that have been in their families for generations. That's true in this case, but it's a story that starts off with a little different direction. Bringing in the crops on the Briggs family farm is a regular autumn occurrence. And with this harvest, Bill Briggs continues a farming tradition that began with his great-grandfather more than a century ago. In 1909 is when my great-granddad, Charles Evans, came out here. And he had 12 kids. And there are a lot of other family farms in our community that are descendants of him, too. They're just as close related as I am. A fourth generation grower, Bill fully expected to pass the farm on to his two boys, but understood when his younger son, Joss, chose another career path. It was always in the plans for him to come back, but it really just wasn't a place for him when he stepped right out of college. Joss had set his sights on a career in broadcasting. It's one of those things that I was always fascinated with uh, broadcasting and journalism. I always felt like it had an important place in our society. and. Uh, pursued that through college and then afterward. Joss's career took him to Wyoming and then a broadcasting job in Dallas. But when his grandfather passed away, Joss and his wife Megan decided they wanted to return to family and farming. Family is just extremely important. Uh, you know, this farm survived for five generations is there's somewhat of a responsibility um, and a reward to being part of that and hoping to carry it on for uh, our children to make them the sixth generation. Brother Bart says Joss's return was a natural transition back to the farm. You grow up on the farm like I did, my brother, and you help your dad all your life growing up and your brother's always alongside working with you and your dad is the one that's obviously in charge but um, hands the reins over to you quicker than he probably would an employee because by osmosis you pick up on things a lot quicker when you eat it and breathe it and live it. Joss admits there were some initial adjustments to make from city to country life. Megan was pregnant and, and she was really wanting a Starbucks fix right after we'd moved back. And so we drove to Colby, which is the nearest Starbucks, 80 miles away, just to get a coffee and then back home. While Bill Briggs understands the contributions that urban communities make to the nation, he thinks farmers are fortunate to see very different, tangible results. You know, you realize that you're doing something that's important for everybody's daily living. And I think most farmers feel the same way. They want to leave everything better than what, the way they found it. And through different farming techniques, I think we're doing that now. And so everything's very tangible. You see what you're doing and, and you get to see everything grow and mature and then harvest it. It's a life choice important to his sons as well. You know, I feel like farming is probably one of the most rewarding things a person can do. When you actually can physically put something in the ground, watch it grow, and then reap the harvest off of it, and know what that product's gonna do for not only people in this country, but other countries, that's a very rewarding feeling. Do you think there might be enough moisture here then? Bill, Bart, and Joss collectively farm more than 7,000 acres of wheat, corn, and sorghum. We try to communicate with each other all the time. Joss pretty well takes care of making sure things are fertilized right and, and kind of takes care of that. Bart works on the marketing a lot. And I'm trying to turn things more and more over to him all the time because in about three or four years, I expect to be completely retired and rent my shares to them. Sons Bart and Joss also raise cattle on another 800 acres of grassland. My brother and I run a, a cow-calf operation. It's Red Angus, and we mix some shorthorn in it, and we'll uh, grow the calves up and sell them in the winter, and then start all over again next spring. Bill Bart and Joss will tell you that their wives are integral to the success of their farming operation. Amy's a big reason that, of what makes this work for me and, and for our farm, and with her support, you know, we're able to get the things done we need to get done in the field. She handles a lot of the books for for us and a lot of the, the support that that's kind of goes unsung behind the scenes. In wheat harvest, this is the big event that we have such long days, they bring out two meals a day. 
Joss's Here, wife, Bella. Megan, has a master's degree in social work. Up until this year, has been a clinical counselor, and this year she decided to uh, step back from, from <laughs> her career and take a more active role on the farm, trying to learn how to drive a truck right now and, and help handle the books. With two sons now working the family land, Bill says the future looks good for yet another generation of Kansas farmers. Well, I hope it stays in the family. In fact, that's one of the things my wife and I have worked on the last couple of years. We've worked on wills and deeds and stuff so that the grandkids have the opportunity to, to uh, step right in. And that's, that's the ultimate goal of most family farms is to pass it on to the next generation. I feel like as a farmer, for me personally, you're doing something you enjoy, number one, but you want to take care of it so that if the generation below you wants to make the opportunity to do it, they can do it as well. We want to make sure that that, that door's open to them, um, that if they're passionate about agriculture and want to live out here, obviously that would be, that'd be our goal, that'd be our dream, but uh, you know, it's, it's up to them. But we want to make sure that that option's available to them if they want to come back.